Good. Good morning. Welcome to connect any external data source with custom Apex connector. My name is Ralph Schunnel. I'm a product manager at Salesforce, and I have with me Joyce. Uh, she's a software engineer on our team. Hi. We are rushing through because we have fully packed and they're really running a tight schedule here, so I'm really quick. But you all know the slides. I'm not really talking about it much. Keep in mind, we might make forward-looking statements, so please do not consider those statements when you make your purchasing decisions. So what are we going to talk about today? I thought we, we just start very briefly to level set everybody. What is Salesforce Connect? What are the key characteristics? Uh, we do a quick outlook of the roadmap, like what did we deliver in winter? What's coming in the next couple of releases? And then um, we really dive into a demo, uh, how to build a custom Apex connector to connect to an external uh, data source. And then hopefully we have a few minutes left for Q&A. The key message about Salesforce Connect is really leverage external data without copying it into Salesforce. That's really kind of the, the foundation that you have to keep in mind when you hear about Salesforce Connect, because some of the limitations are also defined by the fact that the data really doesn't exist in Salesforce. Um, there are three ways to connect to external data sources. I would say the two most popular ones uh, right now is OData, OData 2 and 4. Um, so if your data source supports OData, it's really just point and click to set up the integration. Salesforce Connect also offers uh, read and write capabilities to other Salesforce orgs. So you can use it to share data across multiple Salesforce orgs that you have, again, with no code. And then, of course, our code option, that's the Apex Connector Framework. It's a really powerful tool to leverage external data sources that have APIs. Um, also good to know that you can use Salesforce Connect to, to report on data. Um, create dashboards with what we call the classic reporting, but then you can also use it to um, load data into Einstein analytics, um, use uh, trending capabilities, and you can also use Sockel steps to bring external data into, into dashboards. Uh, two new features, uh, we actually have a separate session that uh, we put a plug in later, is about external data change tracking. This is really about changes in the external system triggering processes in Salesforce. So we are really very happy to, to have launched this this winter. And then also for you developers, batch Apex support. Um, we only had very basic batch Apex support, and now we officially have all the, the power of batch Apex at, at your disposal for Salesforce Connect. Just a quick reminder. So for Salesforce Connect, we created a new object type called the external object. Think of it as the cousin of the custom object. It pretty much looks like a custom object. It feels like a custom object. You can do pretty much all the things that you can do with a custom object, but the data is not stored in, in Salesforce. And, and by creating this new object type, you basically have the full power of the platform. And I only mention a few things here because they're really important. Search. You can search the data in your external system from within Salesforce. I think that's a really powerful tool. Mobile, you don't have to do any additional work um, to enable on your Salesforce mobile device uh, external data. Uh, and then, of course, you have Apex, Visual Force, Social Sockel, um, all the things that you are very familiar with. Now, what did we deliver in winter? I mentioned already the external uh, data change tracking. It's a closed pilot right now. If you're interested, talk to us. Uh, it basically leverages the streaming API and metadata API, so there's no UI yet to set it up. Um, I mentioned batch Apex support. Um, Salesforce Connect callout event monitoring. It basically adds the Salesforce Connect callout logs into event monitoring so that you can leverage there. And then we also published a new validation tool on the App Exchange that allows you to validate your external data source in a very easy way. Now, what's coming in spring? Uh, the next generation of the external data change tracking, we want to move it into an open pilot. Uh, for that, we need um, a UI, for example, to set it up. Um, we will support Apex triggers um, on the change events, and we also will support next links. Um, some of you might have heard about GDPR, so we have to make modifications to the event callouts. Um, and then uh, we also will provide more comprehensive debug logs. 
On the long-term roadmap, we want a GA, external data change tracking. We want to provide custom header support uh, for HTTP callouts so that you can send additional parameters to the external data source for feed, uh, filtering when you retrieve data. Um, we move setup into Lightning Experience, and we also want to improve um, the validation and sync um, in the future. A lot of you have asked about the um, Apex mock data producer. If you want to have test automation, the uh, mock data provider really provides the capability that you can run tests without having a live external data source. I think that's especially important for development. Um, last but not least, um, also talked about a lot, Salesforce Connect Lite, a more slimmed down version um, at, at a different price point that has uh, not the full capabilities um, so that you can start it with the product um, without buying the full license. It was super quick, so now it's demo time. Joyce, take it away. Hi, everyone. So, is my mic on? Okay. Uh, today I will be demoing the Apex Connector framework by creating a custom connector here with all of you today. I have an external system that stores property and realtor information, and from that I want to bring it in my, or use it in my org, but keep it in my external data source. So let me flip over here. <clears throat> I have a REST service here. Uh, if I do slash realtor, the endpoint, I retrieve all of the realtors in my service. If I do slash property, I, have a, uh, I return a list of properties. So what's interesting here is the realtor ID on property links back to the realtor um, from the realtor object. And so I will be showing you how to create a lookup as well. So let's get into some code. This is a good uh, candidate for using Apex Connector because it is not an OData provider. Instead, it's a RESTful web service. So when using the Apex uh, framework, what we want to do is create a provider class and a connection class. The provider class describes what your data source will look like. So what we start with is overriding get authentication capabilities. How do we authenticate to your external system? In my case, as we saw in the REST client, we do not need authentication. But I have added basic here to make this demo a little bit more interesting. What's also available is certificate and OAuth. Um, for some of the more complex kinds of authentication, you don't need to do anything here. You just need to return the kinds of authentication that are needed. Um, the next thing you want to do is Describe what kind of capabilities you have on the data itself. So in this demo, I will be able to query the data, and I want to be able to search through it. Other options are create, update, and delete. And as Rolf mentioned, the data is never in Salesforce. So you're creating, updating, and deleting on your external system. And last, we just define our connection class, which I'll get to next. Let's get back to an org that I have. So the provider class gives me enough information to create an external data source. So in setup here, come to external data source, create new. And you'll see here that property data source provider is now listed here because I inherited from data source provider. Okay. So let's give it a name. The identity type or the authentication is anonymous, like I had described. But we can also have per user or name credential because I have listed basic uh, here and get authentication capabilities. OK, so let's save. Now that I have defined my external data source, I want to be able to define the schema of my data. And that's done through the validate and sync button in the UI. So let's go back to my connection class. This is where it's important. The connection class is used to both describe the schema of your data and also perform queries, create, read, update on your data. It's kind of the bread and butter of what you want to do once you have your external um, data source listed. So the first thing we do is implement sync. So sync is called when we click validate and sync in the UI, and it returns a list of tables. So in a relational database, you have tables and columns. In Salesforce, we have external objects and fields. Uh, and similarly, you'll see later, we'll, we have rows, which maps to data or records in Salesforce. 
So in sync right now, we are just dealing with metadata. So let's start first with the realtor. OK, let's go back. You see we have first name, last name, and a license number. That's pretty straightforward. These are all text fields. So let's go in. Excuse me. Uh, we want to add the columns to a list of columns. These are the field names that we want on our external object. So we define text, text. And this is for uh, first name and last name. It creates a text field on the external object. Now, to keep things interesting, I have a license number, but I want to map it to a contact I have in my org already. I can use an indirect lookup, which is a lookup from an external object to a custom or standard object. So I have the field name, which I want it to be license number. And I want to create a lookup to the contact object on the custom field realtor license number. So I've already created that in contact. Next, uh, we have external ID and display URL. So we didn't see that in my web service here, but these are required standard fields on an external object. And later when I get into data, we'll see what we can populate here. Once we have the columns, we want to populate the table itself. Uh, this is a very verbose way of declaring a table. You can uh, specify the label, the description, and the name. And what's really important is adding your columns to your table. Uh, like I said before, sync returns a list of tables, so let's add the realtor table to the li list of tables. Next, I have property fields. So right now, we go back here. You'll see, again, this is all pretty standard. The only special thing that I want to do is create an external lookup from realtor ID back to the realtor object. So an external lookup is a lookup between two external objects. So how do I do that? External lookup becomes the field type here. I specify the field name I want it to be on external object, and then the external object itself, underscore, underscore, x. Okay? Uh, and this is like we just talked about. We have the external ID, the display URL, and then <clears throat> pretty straightforward, the text and number field types that we have to map. And again, this is more of a succinct way to add a table or columns to a table and then the table to the list of tables. So let's return now the realtor table and the property table. So let's go back to my org, validate and sync. Oops. Now these two tables show up. Let's sync. So we're. When we press sync, it's actually creating the external objects. Like Rolf said, they look and feel very similar to custom objects. OK, so we've created these two. Let me just create a tab for them so we can look at them in a bit. These are just random. <laughs> OK. Uh, so next, let's deal with the data. Now that we've defined how the schema of the data, now we need to be able to query the data. So I have uh, implemented query, which is part of data source connection. And from there, I, from the context, I'm able to get the table. So this is important because depending on the table, that um, I need to be able to parse my data in the right way because there's different fields on property and realtor. So let's go through and uh, look at the get rows that I've implemented. It makes a get call out. So here we have get rows. Um, we need to either use the endpoint slash realtor or slash property, which we've done. And we pass in the URL and make a get call out. Next, we deserialize the JSON. As you saw from here, it's a list of objects. So I can go ahead and cast it to a list of objects. Now, in, now what I want to do is create a list of maps. Now, this map is a map of the field name and the value itself. So I'll go through each piece of data, and I will populate a row. So like I mentioned earlier, a row means data means a record. Okay. So let's go through. What does populate row, realtor row look like? 
Um, I'm able to directly match what's in my JSON. So uh, you see here, I have ID, first name, last name. This matches exactly what I see in the response. And I map that to the field on the external object. Okay. Uh, interesting thing I've done here is I've extracted the ID, and I use that for both the external ID, and I append it also to the display URL. And we'll see what that looks like once I um, query for data. Okay. Property row, populate property rows done in a very similar way. Okay. And then from here, we are able to uh, query and return data from our external system. So let's take a look here. If I go to Realtor, view all. So this matches what we've seen when I use my REST client. Let me add some more fields so this is interesting. Okay. Now we had created an indirect lookup to the contact uh, standard object. So let's see. Instead of license number being the four um, digit number that I, I had when I got the results here, instead it's mapped to a contact. So I can go ahead and click it and you'll see here's Astro Trailblazer and his realtor license number is AAAA. Now this is the display URL where I appended the ID to the end of my REST endpoint. And what this does is it opens up uh, the result from my service. OK. OK. Now let's take a look at property. OK. Let's view all. And let me add some more fields so this is interesting. External ID display URL, very similar to what we saw in Realtor. Um, what's interesting here is the external lookup. So, it, so when I click on Realtor ID, you will see I've linked to the Realtor row that matches. So one was Trailblazer, Astro Trailblazer. And if I hit two, the, that's the idea of Joyce the Realtor. OK. And what's also possible is. Um, in query, in my connection, I'd use a query utils process, and it, it can filter locally based on any local filters I've set. So uh, let's create a filter here. Uh, say I want state New York. OK, save. Again, we're filtering. OK, and one last thing. You'll see here, I sh can show the status. If I were to update the status on the external system, it will render here. So why don't I do, so this is a property. Let's do a put. And instead of for sale, I'm, it's now in escrow. So let's send it to get it back. It's now in escrow right here. So if I go back to my external day, uh, go back to my uh, property object, refresh it, it's now in escrow here. This data lives again outside of Salesforce. Okay. So this is a very brief demo. I wish we had more time to do more, but there are other resources that can be helpful if you want to create your own Apex connector. Uh, so first tomorrow, shout out to Thomas. He's in the back, and he has a session on leveraging change events in external systems. Tomorrow, Tuesday, at 10, 10 to 10.40. So he has more time to deep dive into external systems and chain event, change events. We also have our Trailblazer community, which is formerly known as a success community. Join us there. Ask us questions. Show us what you're doing. Also, there are external documentation with examples um, that you can base your work off of as well. Thank you very much.